pitches to a round table talking about sustainable industrialization, digitalization and forcing innovative economy. Uh, the person in charge of this moderation will be our friend uh, Ricardo Ria, CEO at Trioteca, and as I told you before, he was one of the managers of the Technova time ago. Ricard, I give you the word uh, in order to manage the roundtable. Thank you. Thank you so much, and thanks for inviting me. Um, can you hear? Oh, okay, I'm here. Thanks so much. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, it's it's a pleasure to be here for these 20 years. Uh, as Josep told, um, I was I was the manager many years ago, so uh, congratulations for for these 20 years. So I'm really excited to uh, moderate this panel uh, because the this is this panel is really important for uh, startups and entrepreneurs because because three ha we have three of the best companies uh, that came through the process of, of La Salle, El Parque de Innovación La Salle de Tecnova now, and I'm really excited to be, to be here. Um, I think that the main topic for this uh, talk, it's let's say M&A. So these three companies that we have here uh, are, were being acquired by some other uh, big companies. So I'm really excited to uh, add to that uh, talk to uh, Luis Cortez, um, Miguel Teixido, and André Fanny Robin. So it's a pleasure uh, to have you all here. It's been a while, right? Hello, Luis. Hello, <laughs> Miguel. Hello, ago. Miguel. <laughs> Un placer hello, hello. A todos aquí. La verdad. So um, thanks for being here. So th this is gonna be this is gonna be a talk. Um, Really, uh, we have 30 minutes to talk about um, a lot of stories uh, in La Salle, but let me start from the beginning. So first question, so please introduce yourself, just one minute speed uh, about who are you. So with the A, let's say, Andre, it's your turn. Okay, Ricard. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ricard. So happy to see you uh, again after so many years and uh, Miguel yeah. and Luis and Deb. Uh, Carmen, thank you very much for, for inviting me to be a part of this 20-year uh, uh, celebration. Uh, La Salle is uh, for us uh, really in our heart. Thanks to the uh, environment, the accelerated ecosystem, we were able to uh, build, uh, grow and uh, sell uh, Best TV uh, as a company. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I'm 50 uh, and uh, I have started my uh, entrepreneurial activity in 1995. Uh, had a success, had a failure, had a success. Uh, uh, now uh, I am in my uh, fifth company. Uh, so the gray hair that I have is not just a result of hard work, it's also a result of failing and of understanding how to learn from that failure and uh, continuing to try to earn a living doing what I love, which is uh, entrepreneurship and building, building value. So that's who I am. Thank you. Thanks, Andre. So next, Luis, Miguel. Hi, so I'm, I'm Luis Cortez. Hope you can hear me well. And, you know, I don't have gray hair, but I basically lost all my hair building my company. So that's, that's what happened, right? So it's, a, it's a, a f effort, innovation, imagination, laughing a lot and working a lot. And, and working with great people. I think the key in, in everything I've been doing is I've been lucky enough to be surrounded by people that in many cases were better than me in many aspects. And, you know, when you're leading this A teams, it's, it's easier to get to whatever you're going, right? And the other thing I wanted to mention is that we were the, we were the first company that actually joined all the, the networks of trampolines back then in the time actually I, I i have an anecdote and and you said michael will correct me here but because he was there when we were accepted funitech didn't even exist funitech was actually it was getting ready and it was actually founded a few weeks or months after we, we kind of joined right so that's that's how early we were and how thankful we are and yeah probably i'll share later how much we learned and how we enjoyed working with everyone in, in la Salle, of course Thank you, Luis. Miguel. Good morning, everyone. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me uh, here. And uh, I, I can really be very, very excited to, to join this uh, conference. Oh, I'm, I'm very 
proud because uh, La Salle has been in, in, in my heart and in my activity for the last 40 years. My professional activity started in 1987. I studied telecommunications engineering in La Salle and through a program called IA Este, I went to Finland I, to a company in Nokia. Nobody knew who is Nokia at that time. So that I, I stayed uh, there for many years. Uh, and then uh, later on, when I came back to Barcelona, I studied my MBA in, in La Salle as well. And I joined Nokia in Spain. Then I had to open and close a R&D center in, in, of Nokia in, in Barcelona. So then again, uh, uh, Brother Daniel uh, uh, gave me the opportunity to, to, to install ourselves in, in La Salle. As Luis said, uh, much earlier than the park was created, I remember I participated in the in the open the ceremony of the first uh, Primera Piedra. I don't know how you say it, the first stone with the president of of, of Catalonia, and uh, so La Salle helped us uh, a lot in the beginning. Uh, then uh, we fly ourselves, but also in the later stage, La Salle has been participating in in in, in that. So uh, I cannot say anything else than thank you to to La Salle. So a lot of uh, thanks so much for for being here. As you can see, um, so there's many uh, there's many years uh, related all of us in in La Salle. So that's why we are really uh, thankful uh, to La Salle. So um, let's focus the talk um, uh, on on one specific company, uh, the company that was related with La Salle. So Andre, uh, as he said, he was the founder of uh, co-founder of Best TV. Um, a company uh, that was acquired by Motive TV in 2010. Uh, Motive TV was a, um, an incorporated company in the AIM in, in, in the stock exchange in, in London. Uh, Miguel Tejido was the founder of Genaker. Genaker was acquired recently, uh, maybe 2020, by Ericsson. So really big corporation. Anyway. And Luis uh, was acquired by, uh, what's the word? Created uh, Polymira. And 2012 was acquired by Red Hat, an incorporated company in the New York Stock Exchange. So um, it's really, nowadays, it's really complicated to have this uh, round table with three successful stories, many stories. Um, and we are all from, from, from Barcelona or based, or used to be uh, based in Barcelona and related with that, uh, with that University La Salle. So um, I don't know how many m and company we have uh, um, related with Genesal, but I'm sure that in the future we have a lot more, I'm sure. So um, let me go with the second question. Um, why did you end up coming to La Salle? Because it was many years ago, and I know your, your stories, and, and you came for different reasons. So um, Andre, so the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Ricard. Well, uh, the idea, uh, the conception needed to be transformed into a technological reality. And uh, I uh, did not have access to the uh, software development or the uh, telecommunication engineering skills. Um, and obviously uh, had very small startup capital. So by approaching uh, La Salle, uh, I presented the business plan and uh, asked if their uh, telecommunications uh, engineering school had any programs that could help us uh, kickstart the technological development of Best TV um, and uh, could help us also in the fundraising process. And uh, after having been accepted, uh, we had obviously the privilege of being able to count on very professional, very uh, uh, experienced uh, professors who handpicked uh, last year's students to work first as interns and then as, as uh, software and telecommunications engineers and accompanied us for a period of literally three years uh, to go from the idea to the full-blown deployment of the technology, which eventually ended up being patented. So uh, La Salle uh, and the School of Engineering uh, was a, a solution to uh, the problem of how do you convert an idea into a reality, especially if it's technologically based. Uh, and that's why, uh, after having also spoken to UPC, uh, UPC and UAB, which are two other universities 
in, in Barcelona, uh, the entrepreneurial mentality of uh, La Salle uh, was the one that prevailed and uh, basically encouraged us to work with them. And uh, that's the reason why we forged that relationship, which eventually was very successful. That's a great story. So a lot of technology and, uh, and then a lot of, uh, so of course, capital as well. So, so great, great story. So Luis, what was uh, your story? So in, in our case, we experienced innovation in La Salle in, in a particular way because I was uh, alumni of the first masters in e-commerce back in the, in the early 2000s. And while doing that, that was kind of my first exposure to La Salle. I thought about studying telecommunications many, many years ago, but that's a different story. That went a different route. So while doing the masters, actually, was when the all the ideas about helping startups, the trampolines idea was actually flourishing around. CDM was thinking about things, etc. And then I liked studying so much that I actually went and did a second master's, which was a master's in e-business in in La Salle as well. And that was when I became an entrepreneur. Uh, actually, I combined being in Barcelona Activa, which is another fantastic institution that we, we have in Barcelona. They were so helpful at the time, of course, and continue to be, I think. And we were just thinking about how to develop technology, how to create a new software company in many aspects. And one of the challenges we had was talent and, and capital, of course, right? So the way we solved a good part of that was working with the trampoline in terms of, of uh, financing with a CDM financing at the time. You remember the capital concepta and all those all those things. And the other thing was by setting up a research team with LaSalle that actually we worked with, they did the software development for us, they guided us through many of the different steps to actually build the, the software that eventually would become part of the Polymerat platform. And all the while combining all the friendships that I had from the master's degree, all the people that I had known through that. So it was a different way to approach the cell, very, very like business focused, but with very strong innovation and technology based all around what were the master's degrees and then the trampoline. Thank you, Luis. So um, you talk a lot about CDEM for the audience. CDEM now it's Axio. Uh, I changed it. Oh, yeah. It was many years ago, and the, and the yeah. Capital Concepta was, I think, was the most successful product that the Catalan government did for entrepreneurs. I think so. It, it was like um, let's say the Catalan Enisa, more or less. Uh, it was 100k uh, for for companies, and it was it was really successful at the time. So if there is any uh, governmental one uh, listening to us from the Catalan government, so please do it again, because it's, it was really helpful for all the companies. So thank you, Luis. Miguel. Okay. As, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in year 2003, I was working for the R&D Center of Nokia in Barcelona. And uh, unfortunately, Nokia decided to shut down the, the, the center. So then, uh, 20 years ago, things were not like now. First of all, the, the park didn't exist yet. Uh, but uh, we had to, because of this decision, uh, we, we had uh, different choices to continue with Nokia somewhere else, to work somewhere else. But uh, I always had the somehow the idea that I would like to create a company. And I think that we had a so good know-how at that time that we wanted to, to explore this know-how. So why La Salle? La Salle because, well, uh, overnight I w didn't know what to do, where to go. It was summertime, it was June, so everybody then lives for holiday two or three months. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, I went to talk with uh, brother Daniel, and I explained my situation. And he offered the possibility to stay at La Salle in, in, in one room, uh, the, the park didn't exist yet, uh, to start there and, and then to see later on what happens and how it goes. For me, the key word is vision. Why vision? Well, at that time, of course, brother Daniel was uh, very important to help that, but Jose Miquel Pique was also there and uh, I think that both La Salle and Genaker, we shared a vision 
the vision from La Salle, of course, I think it was already in their plans to, to, to build up the park and to, to bring uh, innovative companies. And we had a vision also because we had, we had in 2003 at Nokia, the technology that later on Apple implemented for the iPhone. So we wanted to develop these mobile services and uh, we thought that there is no better place than also than in the future an innovation park or a university like, like La Salle. But I think that from La Salle point of view, I don't know, maybe we have to ask just Michael Piquet, but we want to do and, and, and then there was a match between the, the two parts. We stayed there for three years. I have to say that we didn't pay uh, any rent. So that helped a lot because as, as you say in the beginning, you don't have a, uh, you don't have a, uh, how you say, <laughs> you, you, you don't have any else, anything else than your time. And, and uh, that, that was very, very important. Uh, and also then to be there with the students and with, uh, uh, well, in the environment of the, of the campus of, uh, of uh, engineering La Salle. So it's it's a nice story the the three of you because um you talk about of of course technology so you came to La Salle for the technology so um, the the three of you then looking for capital investment of course the trampoline at the time so the the, the entrepreneurial department was really focused on the some funding. But then I think that everything it's connected by ambition, ambition from the university, because um, 20 years ago, making a technological park was a real disruption, real, uh, because thanks to that uh, vision, uh, um, now you are here, right, with, uh, with your successful stories, um, because um, building a company is always really complicated, of course, and in the very beginning, you need a lot of help. So, of course, Barcelona Activa is helping a lot, of course, but La Salle, La Salle uh, is helping as well on, on the technology side and uh, on business and uh, another way to work for the students, the future students that are coming out from the university. So it's, uh, it was really a visionary product uh, many years ago, 20 years ago. Now it's like a normal thing because everyone has a, a park, but 20 years ago was, was complicated to, to manage. So congratulations to La Salle as well for, for that. And, um, you were talking about, uh, all of you talk about uh, the, the capital. Could you explain about your, um, your funding journey? So uh, in, in your company, so Polymita, Jenneker and Best TV, uh, could you explain about what was your journey? So starting from the beginning and ended up uh, with the M&A. So Andre? Well, uh... Ricardo, uh, before I, I answer your question, just want to confirm that uh, definitely uh, La Salle uh, was a pioneer in the field of uh, innovation parks and uh, José Piquet is an institution uh, behind this and of course Brother Daniel, uh, may he rest in peace, um, but uh, definitely very grateful for this enormous framework that uh, they allowed uh, us to uh, navigate through. And navigating meant uh, startup capital, uh, friends and family that we brought. Uh, but obviously, if we didn't combine that uh, capital with uh, the technological uh, contribution, meaning uh, financing the actual development and the engineering work was part of the uh, fundraising experience. Uh, and that at the time was what was being provided for by the uh, Innovation Park. Uh, secondly, accessing, obviously, the public uh, funding processes in Spain. Um, yes, the CDEM, now Axio, uh, having access to, at the time, which I believe still is the case, uh, Neotech, uh, ENISAS, and all these uh, government uh, funding opportunities uh, were fast-tracked, thanks to the uh, staff uh, uh, of uh, and who did a very, very good job in helping us uh, prepare for all of these different requirements. And obviously combining that public funding with private funding, which encouraged private investors at the time uh, to feel that they were not the only ones uh, risking their capital, was very useful. And then ultimately combining both public and private funding uh, to get into Series A uh, after the actual business model had been validated uh, was the uh, pr the final step 
and obviously before we got to uh, Series B, um, we decided to uh, to sell the company, uh, which was why we relatively sold early, uh, i.e., only uh, after uh, five years. Um, but that that was the process: uh, seed, uh, technologically funding slash financing, public funding in these different layers, and then uh, business angels combined with public funding, and finally culminating with the Series A. And then in our case, it was an exit. But that was the funding uh, process. That's great. Uh, that exit became with with a company um, listed on the on 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 the aim. So, so you have like like all the all the all the views. Thank you, Andre. Correct. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Yes. Luis, we cannot hear you. Oh, I'm sorry, I went mute. Okay. So in our, in our, yeah, in our case, I already talked about Capital Concepta. And I think a key thing happened uh, uh, after that, which is we raised the first round with what we, you call, you know, the friends, families and fools type of thing. In our case, most of that round actually was uh, disembursed by employees of Polymita. So it was very interesting because all, over, over half of the total um, total payroll in, in Polimita with all the which actually was a very interesting thing to have through many, many years. They didn't have like options or RSUs or all of these phantom shares. They had outright shares. They put their money where their mouth was, right? And that was a great experience to have, not only because we were 100% transparent with them because they were partners of the company. There was nothing to hide, of course. But not only because of that, but the, the way in which we made decisions actually helped us a lot, especially in, in difficult times when at some point we had to make difficult decisions as to things that we would need to make with, uh, with the company. So that was very interesting. We, uh, we were lucky to receive uh, Fedeti funds and uh, ENISA as well. We raised uh, significant amounts of money from didn't manage to buy out. So Eric and I, Eric is super, you know, funding that we from the VC with the and that led us to actually think in a completely different way about the company and who to partner with moving forward. And actually, in that process of partnership, we were approached by different companies, and one of them was Red Hat. And they said, you know what? Instead of actually, you know, investing in your company, uh, we just want to buy you out. We think this has so much potential. We want company was basically funded by by this kind of. Uh financial public finance in parallel then uh, of course we managed to to get revenue from customers and and the benefit uh, of the of the revenues of the year that was capitalized and we use this for uh, for sales uh, and for other activities for keeping the fixed costs of the company and 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 so on the key thing was in 2014 uh, we managed to to win a, a european fund from from um, SM, SME, it was called SME Instrument from the program Horizon 2020. At that time, we had a technology in place, but we had the vision to develop the next evolution of the technology. And we used this money, actually that was 1.3 million euros that went uh, subsidy. But not only the money that opens you to, 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 how I would say to. You looking for to sell the company in one time and in, in, in one point. And that's the same question to you, Andre. When did you know exactly that now it's the time to sell the company? Because, uh, in, in that ecosystem, especially Barcelona, a matter of funding right now, there's, there's many funding, uh, out there and when is exactly the time to think about to sell the company so it's it's like a feeling it's like a, some metrics so what's your thoughts here okay i start we never thought about it was not in our plans to sell the company when we created okay. the company the, the purpose was to 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 keep our salaries and to work there and and so on and uh we really wanted to grow the company and make it bigger. But uh, when we were growing so much and it was so difficult to keep uh, 
to keep on going with the different customers and so on. Then we, we really saw that the, this is the, the best opportunity that we can have. It's the best for everyone, no? for, for Ericsson, because Ericsson wanted to buy the company. For our employees, because now we were 20, now they are 80 in more than one year. And they are a global unit that is developing a technology that is offered all over the world for uh, Catalonia and Spain, because of course this is to bring here knowledge and know-how and so on. And of course for the shareholders, because, uh, well, we were uh, putting money all the time there. And I can guarantee, and Lasalle knows that, that, that only one year before we sold, we, we were in trouble with the financials because we had to invest a lot. So, I mean, things changed very, very quickly. Uh, but finally, everything went, went well. And if you ask me today, I, I would answer that we were stupid that we didn't want to sell the company because, because now, uh, at least myself, I would be in, in, in a lot of programs. <laughs> When we started the company, we were, you know, Palimira was a business process management, which is a type of enterprise software that by definition is global and is used by big corporations all around. Building that type of company requires lots of uh, resources growing, mm -hmm. is, is, is expensive in cash. So we were aware of, of two things. First, that we would need lots of funds from advanced investors like VC companies. The other thing was that these investors want a return on their money. So there has to yeah. be an exit. Either you sell the company or you IPO it, or you know, if things may not go well and you just close down, right? So we knew for minute one that we would go to a liquidity event at some point in the future. It could be two, five or ten years. We took it took us ten years actually, right? So success doesn't come fast. So that we taking it's, it's another important important thing, right? Having said that in the last, uh, as I mentioned before, after the management buyout in which we recovered control of the company, we looked out for, for funds for international growth. We wanted to work with strategic investors, not with only investors like, like, uh, like where VCs at the time. And the interesting thing was that uh, we actually worked with, uh, with a boutique company, a boutique m &E company from Barcelona. They were very, very, very helpful for us. And what ended up happening is that I think you need to listen to the market and see what the market is taking. You. So we were selling shares, if you will, in exchange for investment, right? That, that was our value proposition is, you know, we have this growth, invest in and provide us really with smart money, access to customer, access to channels, and we will grow together, right? With this very unique technology that we have created. That was, you know, the big analysts like Garner and Forrester, they were all talking about it. So it was, it was a very compelling proposition. And we talked to many of the big firms, I mean, from Amazon to Google to many of those. And the, the, the M&A firm kept coming to us and saying, you know, these guys are not interested in investing, these guys are interested, but these guys would be interested in maybe buying you if it was you know, the right price and conditions and everything, right? And we were like, no, no, we would, we're not selling. I mean, we want to, we want to grow this in the future. But then they would come the next week. You know, these guys were not interested, but these new people, and I'm talking about listed big companies. I mean, I, I can't talk about the names, but it's all like big, very knowledgeable companies, right? So, you know, the second and the third time that they tell you, hey, people are interested in buying the company more than investing, is like, okay, what am I selling and what is the market buying, if you know what I mean, right? So that was when yeah. we said, you know what? We started thinking about what was the best thing to do here, how would the, uh, the acquirer use the company, how would our own employees fit into the new company, which is another thing we can talk about as well, which is part of the acquisition process, right? How would both Eric and my roles be in the new company? We, would we be able to keep leading projects? Would that be kind of, you know, exciting for us to do that? And eventually we received three letters of intent from listed companies. And, wow. you know, there's, there's a market for, for companies based on EBITDA, revenues and stuff. Ended up going for with Red Hat mostly for two reasons. One is that we love the chemistry with the team. Red Hat is a great place to work. It's a great place uh, to to uh, collaborate with. And they have this culture around open source, which was the other thing, right? The fact that our 
product would become an open source product it means that you know potentially millions of companies would be able to use it even if they didn't pay anything right and then some of them would pay for of course right so that was basically basically the story and we were happy to, to sell to that app. A nice so, story uh, and i and i can testify testify at least in luis's case that uh, it was a, a roller coaster that ended uh, very well uh based on the extraordinary quality of entrepreneurship of luis and his business partner eric um in my, in our case i'd, I'd like to uh or in my case say that uh always looking for a liquidity event uh at the end of the uh, uh effort is important for many reasons uh, the first one is to understand what uh, one is able of building in terms of value and how that value can uh, replicate a market uh, and if uh, replicating the value in the market requires a large amount of money uh, and the risks of achieving this amount of money are high then clearly it can be best served by offering it to somebody else who has deeper pockets bigger larger network and can leverage the uh, uh, value that you have created so a uh, liquidity event, uh, I, I think, as the objective of any entrepreneur is, uh, is the best way to define it. Now, uh, M&A versus uh, listing uh, on, a, on a public market. Um, I can say that uh, the difference was uh, what is the ability of the business uh, to be really a huge uh, company, have impact at, at, in its industry, uh, and being able to secure that uh, leadership. So I built uh, Best TV and uh, the equation was that we cannot uh, become a leader in the industry. Uh, we cannot uh, uh, become the de facto standard uh, worldwide or global wide or European wide in the industry in which we were in, which meant that the M&A option was the best option to be able to uh, provide a liquidity event. And I say that because uh, in the case of Nozama, which I founded uh, two and a half years ago, uh, now we do have a shot at being the world's largest sustainability technology company. And the liquidity event that we are looking for is a public listing uh, when it comes. So uh, for now, the mindset is no M&A, uh, public listing. Uh, we build, we build, we grow, and then we hopefully uh, can keep this pace and, and get to the point of being able to be a public listed company. Uh, obviously, on the road to that path, on the road to that path, you have three forces, forces of competitors, forces of um, a funding uh, rate. In other words, how much funding you can you secure uh, to keep your, your leadership position? And then obviously the founding uh, team's uh, 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 circumstances, can they keep it up? Uh, do they want to uh, cash out some of them or do they, or do they, do they want to continue all the way? So these emotional, financial and, and economic uh, forces uh, are what actually come into play in deciding which liquidity event uh, to uh, to choose. So for the so so uh, basically in conclusion is a, a very honest understanding of one's position in the universe, uh, and based on that understanding, uh, making a decision: Have I created enough value to capitalize from it, or can I actually continue building value and in a leadership position? And that process has to uh, come with the ultimate internal goal is why am I doing this? Why do I do this? I like to build. If I like to build, then if I build something that has value, I must recognize that if somebody else says it has value, I can capitalize on that. So knowing why one person does it is very important. Thanks so much, Andre, because this is a really important thing, uh, because starting a company, it's always really complicated. And in, in the first phase, of course, the you always uh, wake up with that thing in your in your head, like why I'm doing this. So um, having this this goal clear, it's it helps a lot of uh, to achieve the goal. So um, uh, I think that we are out of time. We um, it's, yeah, it's it's really late. Uh, um, thanks so much for uh, that talk. It's been a, a pleasure to be uh, with all of you here. So. Talking about four and three minutes stories uh, behind La Salle, so it's always it's great. So uh, thanks so much to share your thoughts, and hopefully that helps to the young entrepreneurs that are listening to us. So thanks so much, Andre, Luis, Miguel. Hope to see you soon. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Luis, Miguel. Thank you, thank you, everybody.